Hello travelers! I'm Lorkeen, your traveler's guide to Tyria, and today we leave behind the tropical tarnished coast, to continue our search for glory and legend growing deeds, this time in the frost-kissed lands of Wayfarer foothills. I've traveled far to bring Raven his tribute. He sees how far you've traveled, and he sees how far you have to go. Standing head and shoulders above most other races, the Norn are indomitable nine-foot-tall shape-shifting warriors. For my non-American explorers, that's 2.74 meters tall. Or 21 bananas, as the Norn are fond of nature. <laughs> Independent and fierce, they live in the moment, hunting, fighting, and drinking until they fall, only to get up later and start all over again. The saying is they never leave home ahead of their axe and sword, the Norn's tempestuous temperament comes from their unique connection with nature, drawing inspiration and spiritual guidance from it. At the heart of their society, lies the strong bond they have with the spirits of the wild, revered animal totems that guide and protect them. There are many spirits in the world, some even malicious, like those of the mountains, seasons, fire, or darkness, but the Norn revere the spirits of the animals, upon whom they depend for food and shelter. Bear is the mightiest, but raven, owl, wolf, worm, and ox, all have their place in the Norn's heart. The animals are the Norn's brethren, their spirits guide them as they live and hunt. The spirits also aim to help, and they are able to lend their powers, allowing the Norn to transform into the patron spirit's totem form. The spirits of the wild are teachers too, keeping the Norn in check from plundering the land. The Norn used to live further north, making their homes in the icy climes of the far shiver peaks, but Jormag's corruption forced them to abandon their home. It all started with a cursed Norn bear, that a warrior named Jorah was tracking. What is this creature Jorah? You seem to know a lot about it. I know all too much I'm afraid. My brother and I were both hunters. One day we chased our prey across Drakkar Lake, a place our people normally shun. We found something there. Do you feel it, Jora? Something in the air? All I feel is a chill harsher than any blizzard. Yes, it is cold. But it also feels ancient. Old and powerful. This place is cursed, Svanir. Let us leave it. No. A simple spell should reveal the nature of the power. I do not know what we contacted that day, but its energies nearly consumed us. I resisted the power, and was cursed by it. I cannot embrace the wild. I can no longer become the bear. My brother seized the power, and went mad. He was transformed. He became the creature you fought. My brother now raids the Norn settlements. He avoids me, though I pursue him. I communed with the bear spirit. She wishes you to aid me. You want us to help find your brother? No. I want you to help me kill him. Stand aside. I must finish this. Jora, he's defeated. He is my brother. He is my responsibility. <coughs> Jora, you have my sympathy. This was the only way it could end. The curse is lifted, for both me and Svanir, I think. You have helped me. I shall help you. Good. We need to unite the other Norn to fight the Destroyers. I fear my words will carry little weight. I have my brother's blood on my hands. If you can't influence the Norn, then who can? Olaf, the sevenfold son of Olaf, is esteemed by many. 
As for me, I must seek Aegil, who tells tales by the flame to fully redeem my family's name. Olaf it is, then. I need to talk to a Norn leader. Norn do not have leaders, dwarf. Only heroes. Jorah, we can aid you and seek out allies. Let us help you with your burdens. You have the spirit of a Norn, human. I am proud to call you friend. The hero who helped her in this quest, went on to fight by her side, when she removed the char infestation from the area and reclaim her honor and her homestead. You might know it as Jorah's Keep. In return, the hero hoped the Norn would join into battle against the destroyers. Now that felt good. Jora, now that we've helped Hold you... on a moment, Ogden. Jora, are you all right? Yes. Bear is pleased with what we've done this day. Pleased enough to help us? I will continue to aid you. I mean, will the other Norn help? That is for each of them to decide. Can't we just rally your people and raise an army to fight the destroyers? The Norn do not use armies. We fight alone, as true warriors should. But we helped you. And I will help you, Dwarf. I will speak to the others. But whether they help or not is their choice, not mine. It will take forever to raise an army, one Norn at a time. The Norn do not need armies. Ugh, the Great Dwarf save me! You know, he is only worried about his people. I know, but he must understand. Norn are not like dwarves or men. We fight our own battles, our own way. I think I understand. And that is why you lead. Meanwhile, the destroyer started pouring through a gate hidden somewhere within a temple, in the depths of the Raven's Point. So the hero took Olaf Olafson hunting. What were those things? They're called destroyers. They're the threat we have warned you about. This is the North. Threats are an everyday part of life here. I'm afraid this is more than just a passing threat. What do you mean, Vec? Given their numbers, I think there's an active gate nearby. One that links back to the central transfer chamber. Which has been captured by the destroyers. Precisely. Which means all the Norn lands will be overrun. Unless we do something. Bah! If they show up at my doorstep, I'll greet them with an axe! My friends mean to say that these destroyers make for a challenging hunt. A hunt? So why didn't they say so? Come, let's take the fight to them then. That was a battle worth fighting. These destroyers are worthwhile foes. He seems happy. A Norn only does what a Norn chooses to do. Pity your dwarf does not quite understand that. So, my friend, will you gather your forces together to fight the destroyers? I will gladly tell others what wonderful prey they are. But will you gather an army? Norn have no need of armies. We are Norn. Great Dwarf, give me strength! Olaf, it was a good hunt. My friend wants to hunt more, but he is not Norn. He needs more people to help. Is that all? I know your king, Little Dwarf. I can send a message to him. Will that do? Yes, yes, that will. I will send a message to Jealous Ironhammer. I will tell him to meet you near the human encampment, near your Eye of the North. It will take some time. I don't know what to say. I do. Thank you, Olaf, seventh son of Olaf. You have done us a great favor. You are welcome to hunt destroyers anytime. Just try and stop me. Off you go! <laughs> And in the dwarves' hour of need, Olaf Olafsson answered the call, along with his daughter and a couple of their friends, 
and they held the line at the destruction's depths, while the Ascalonian hero and their party battled the Great Destroyer. As we discussed before quite a few times, that battle from 1078 postponed Primordus awakening for some decades, until 1120. But in 1165, Dormag and his army arose under Drakkar Lake, and the Norn likewise rose to fight him. The Norn shook the sky when they fought, but they took heavy losses while Jormag's minions multiplied. For every iceberg killed, two more replaced it. Even Al joined the fight. The great spirits are actually great beings, and they can die. So Al sacrificed herself for the Norn, by flying into the Jormag's maw, scratching and clawing to keep the dragon focused only on her. Jormag destroyed her spirit, but without the Al's sacrifice, the dragon would have consumed all the Norn. Instead, all owls became weaker and more confused when their spirit was killed. Hope itself became a dying ember, some feared the spirits abandoned the Norn, but legend says that in their last hour, Bear, Raven, Snow Leopard, and Wolf, appeared to ask Gear Dragon Render in a vision, and that they spoke to him of sanctuary in the southern Shiver Peaks. With their blessing, Askir slayed the dragon's champion Frostfang, with a single blow, and then he fought the dragon. While he didn't kill the beast, Askir managed to break one of its teeth, which he took as a trophy. After the fight, Askir led his people south, into the land abandoned by the dwarves. Here, he built a hunting lodge, and he planted the great tooth of Jormag right in the middle of it. Then Askir carved new shrines for the spirits. The settlement grew, and today we call it Holbrak, which means lowland in Norn language. My grandmother fought the dragon before Asgir did. She didn't bring back a tooth. She died fighting. That sounds better than getting a trophy from a beast you couldn't kill. Yes, I'm sure she died happy. Askir Dragonrinder's grandson, Knut Whitebeer, is the current master of the lodge and defender of Holbrak, a sort of leader for the Norn. If the Norn would ever put up with that kind of nonsense. So you see why, when Knut Whitebeer organizes the yearly great hunt in Moot, right here in Snow Lord's Gate, every glory hungry Norn jumps at the chance to participate. Whoever brings back the trophies from the wildest animals, is invited to join the great hunt, and battle the fiercest prey. <laughs> see the mighty Minotaur horns I've brought back! Hmm. Are you sure those are from a minotaur? Of course they are! I wrenched them from the rampaging beast's head with my own two hands! Looks like Doliak horns to me. This year, this beast is Izermir, a giant ice worm that Knut Whitebeer personally captured. Whoever defeats it, will impress Air Stagalgan herself, and become the slayer of Izermir. Izermir's body will stay frozen here until the thaw, and so its magic will remain here too and it can be channeled for a hero point. But let's meet some of the other guests. As soon as we step into this party, we are greeted by Thora Griffinbane. Hey, over here! You don't want to miss a chance for glory, do you? Later on, like Lieutenant Francis from Queensdale, she will join our fight. We can see Thora again in Thunderhead Peaks. She just couldn't pass up the chance to fight alongside you, and be a part of your legend. Ah, the great hunt. Each year when the season comes, fresh young hunters rise to the challenge. Exhilarating, isn't it? Other important guests are Sigfast and Scarty, Canute's sons, and leaders of the Peacekeepers Wolfborn. Their mother and Canute's wife, the Enchanter Scarta Whitebeer, also known as the Bane of Lies, followed her wanderlust and is currently having her own adventures, somewhere in the Shiver Peaks. Newt is a strong hunter. If he wasn't so in love with Gerta, well, I'd drag him to my fire. You might not remember, but you already know Mikkel Toivosen. Last year, he cheated and stole from you the title of Champion of the Big Brawl, the other big annual moot that Knut Whitebeer organizes. Another cheater is Varg, he might have got his hands on your family heirloom, if you so choose in your character creation. I've made enough dried chicken feet talismans to take a load to the haven. You actually managed to sell those horrible things? Ah, yes. Humans think they bring good luck, and Char used them to pick their teeth. 
Pobble Icebreaker is the best kegball player in whole brack. He and his story loving ears will wait for you to come back, and share tales of your exploits over a beer. Ruger here thinks Asura are adorable. So my cousin had a huge right arm. The girl sure did tease him. Hey, I remember him. Good old big arm. I think the teasing got to him. He struck north some time ago and we haven't seen him since. Outside the party grounds, next to the axe throwing range, we find a revolting cat which only necromancers can tame, with a grumble cake, a dessert which may drop from the shatterer or shadow behemoth. I wonder if dragons and demons cook. And as always, remember these professional cats will fight each other in your home instance. Close to her, there's Micah who hunts some of the most vicious beasts, and sells them as exotic pets. Don't get your hopes up, they're all spoken for. Andar Westward just bought them all. He didn't think too far ahead, like how to actually get them home to Divinity's reach, but for now he stands here and enjoys his purchase. I'm sure he will manage, as he is in the business of breeding exotic animals from all over Tyria, and you can see some of them at Hadron's Menagerie. Listen up, moot-goers! If you think you're ready for glory, this is the place to prove it! Beastmaster UK and her friends gather beasts and brutes from across the Shiver Peaks, and bring them to this arena, where you can test your strength on them, to make sure you are ready for Izermir. What's that? You want more? Your wish is my command! If you want more, you will have to show me by clicking that like button, or tell me in the comments below. And as always, turn that notification bell on, so you will join us in our next adventure, where we will get up close and personal with the spirits of the wild, and their local shrines. But until then, happy exploring!